Alhamdulillah, he woke up. Was salamun ala ibadi hilazina stafa and ma bad. Aunzu billahi min a shaytan rajim is melahi rahmani rahim. Walladina jahadu fina than a di and nahum sumulana. Subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun. Was salamun ala mursalina walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammadin wa barik wa sallim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammadin wa barik wa sallim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammadin wa barik wa sallim. Alhamdulillah, we are in this month of Shaban and we're fast approaching the month of Ramadan. This month of Shaban was a time when the Prophet ﷺ was extremely focused in preparing for the month of Ramadan. And you can imagine that a student who has his final exam then two or three weeks before their final exam, he starts getting prepared for it. He is thinking more and more about the final exam. And then about three or four days before the final exam, he enters this complete preparation mode. Sort of he enters into a zone in which the only thing he can think about is the final exam. Or to give another example, if there is a person who has a court case coming up, or any type of difficulty, so just five, six days before the decision, before the court announces the sentence, that's the only thing a person can think about. And just like that, one gets this feel about the sunnah, and the mezaj of the Prophet ﷺ, the outlook, the temperament of the Prophet ﷺ, is that in this month of Shaban, the Prophet ﷺ would start to become almost only and exclusively thinking about the month of Shaban, about the month of Ramadan. This Shaban is a month which is neglected by many people, unfortunately. And the tragedy is that this month, however, is packed with a lot of opportunities through which we can maximize our good deeds and we can draw close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, there are certain ahadiths in Mubarakah which mention some special features of this month of Shaban. One thing that is mentioned about this month in hadiths which is mentioned in Sunan in Nisai the Prophet ﷺ said in fact one Sahabi he came to the Prophet ﷺ and said that Ya Rasulullah I don't see you fasting any month as much as in this month is as, a, as much as in this month of Shaban and the Prophet ﷺ said that this month of Shaban is a month that people neglect that is a month that people neglect between Rajab and Ramadan. However, it is a month in which actions are raised to the Lord of the worlds, Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I love that my actions should be raised while I'm in a state of fasting. Yani our deeds are constantly being written down by our angels, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is already aware of whatever amal we do or things that we say. However, the Prophet ﷺ, if you look at different ahadiths, the Prophet ﷺ has singled out specific times when our deeds would be raised, raised before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remind us that we should account for ourselves and we should focus on our ibadah. So for example, elsewhere in a hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said that the angels that take turns among you night and day 
and they all assemble at the dawn and the afternoon salah any fajr and asr and those of the angels who spend the night among you they go up they ascend and then allah subhanahu ta'ala asked them that even though allah subhanahu ta'ala knows best allah ta'ala knows allah ta'ala knows everything but still allah subhanahu ta'ala asked those angels who were coming up that how did you leave my servant and they say that we left them while they were praying and we came to them while they were praying so the shift changes right the one shift the first shift comes at fajr and then they depart and then the next shift comes the night shift comes at asr afternoon prayer so if a person prays at those two times so the angels they leave us in a state that we are praying and they come upon us in a state that we are praying similarly it's also mentioned in other hadiths that our deeds are displayed to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a daily basis after fajr and asr and on a weekly basis on mondays and thursdays and if we divide on a daily basis fajr and asr our deeds are presented to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a weekly basis our deeds are presented on mondays and thursdays and on a yearly basis our deeds are presented to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this month of shaaban that is what this hadith is mentioning that it is this month that people neglect between rajab and ramadan and it is a month in which the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that i wish that my actions should be raised to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a state while i'm fasting because this is an opportunity when actions are raised to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means it's a very special time special occasion special moment when the actions are being presented to allah and we would like that our actions our good deeds are maqbool they are stamped with the stamp of approval they get qubuliya in the allah so to increase the chances of getting qubuliya for all the good deeds that we have done throughout the year one should try to fast in this month as much as possible the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also used to fast more during this month of shaaban to gain this extra reward so that the deeds are presented to allah in such a state that we are fasting because even you know that even if the amal our deeds are deficient there are some shortcomings or imperfection inside of them but if a person is fasting then perhaps allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can look at this amal that at the very least look at my servant he is fasting so i'll overlook the mistakes i'll overlook the shortcomings and i'm just going to accept them in any case we increase the chances of the acceptance of our amal qubuliyat of our amal so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is teaching us a very beautiful technique and surely you know this is the hidayah this is the ihsan the favor of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam upon us by showing us these techniques and strategies by which we can draw close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we were to think on our own we won't even we won't even know that these times are so special these days are so special and this month is so special that my deeds are being presented wouldn't we wouldn't know how to what how to relate with this fact we don't know what we are supposed to do so the what the the benefit of this hadith is that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam first identified for us number 1 that this month is very important because this month is that month in which the actions are raised to allah taala they will be presented before allah but the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't leave it at that he mentioned a second thing so now practically how should we maximize what does that mean practically for us that how can we ensure the qubuliyat of our amal the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that fast in this month and i love that my actions should be raised while i'm fasting so one thing we should try in this month of shaaban is to simply increase our fasting in another riwayah the 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 sahaba kam asked the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that after ramadan which other month uh, is there in which if we fast we'll have fazilat 
in the fasting of which other month is afzal has fazila has virtue in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the prophet sallam replied that the fasting in the month of shaban which is done in order to prepare and honor the month of ramadan that fasting is also very fazilat has a lot of virtue and merit in the sight of Allah so the fasting in the month of shaban is it has fazilat because we are preparing for the month of ramadan and preparing for the month of ramadan this is a very beautiful technique that we start fasting in shaban so what does this mean we must all of us must have experienced that whenever we start any ibadat when you begin any ibadat so initially it's just you don't feel anything in that ibadah it's just an act it's just an amal that you're doing then when you continue doing that ibadah for some time for some days gradually you begin to feel some feeling some noor some anwarat you begin to feel something in that ibadah you begin to enjoy that ibadah take pleasure in that ibadah all of us would have experienced this even in ramadan that at the start of ramadan we are just fasting we're just getting physically used to the amal of fasting and then one week or 10 days pass by and after that we begin to enjoy something we begin to enjoy our fasting and then when the time in the last ashr of ramadan a person's condition is that we would wish that these fasts they never end if you could just continue fasting even outside so what happens is that if a person can start this process before if he can start in shaban and begin to fast in shaban then when we begin when we hit ramadan we will begin to enjoy the fast itself so we should try to use this month of shaban by getting back into this groove of fasting do nafil fast in this month after ramadan there is no other month in which the prophet sallallahu used to fast more than shaban and there is so much benefit in this you get back in this groove of fasting physically you and you make this your habit you also get back in the spiritual groove of fasting you begin to wake up at the time of suhoor when you wake up for suhoor you will pray tahajjud when you pray tahajjud you may also want to make dua for your ramadan then at the iftar again you are making dua and this is the best way to prepare for a ramadan that you are getting back into the habit the pattern that you will have in ramadan like eating suhoor praying tahajjud making dua and all of this you are getting just because of the barakah of that fast then another thing which happens is that when you fast in this month you will remember your previous ramadan you will begin to remember the duas that you made in the previous ramadan those duas that you may have forgotten during the whole year those duas that you didn't work on your on yourself you didn't fulfill them by not working on them but as soon as you restart this process of fasting whatever was associated with the fasting the duas the worship that will also come back and you will be remember you'll start remembering those duas the desires that you had the pledges you made to allah the aspirations you had and it will come from within so really we cannot overstate the benefit of fasting in this month we should make niyat some of us may, may even have qada fasting qaza so we can make niyat of fulfilling those qaza fast as well qaza or nafil and at the very least what this shows is that oh yeah allah we are committed to change we are committed to improve ourselves because for many of us you know you might think that we don't have a maybe a practicing muslim family we didn't really pray before we didn't really fast regularly before so maybe we might have a whole list of qaza namaz qaza salah qaza fast thousands of prayers and only allah knows if we'll be able to do all of them during our life but qaza fast is something that if you sit down and write them out you will see that this is actually doable So at least while fasting in shaban we can also do some qaza fast and make dua to allah 
that Allah, I want to at least to repay some of that debt that I owe to you of these Kaza fast of Ramadan. And that will show our commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are committed to fulfilling the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one amal that we should do in this month is to increase our fasting. Similarly, there are also other ways we can prepare for Ramadan. In uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to he would make the in, in a hadith the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi referred to Shaban as his own month. Imam Sayyuti Rahmatullah has narrated this. He says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that Rajab is the month of Allah Subhanahu Taala. Shaban is my month. And Ramadan is the month of my Ummat. So what this means is that we should also be making an effort to draw close to the Prophet ﷺ during this month. Because Shaban is my month. Shaban is the month of the Prophet ﷺ. And hence we should try to recite more Durood and Salawat in this month. Because what is Durood and Salawat? It's a way of reigniting the relationship we have with the Prophet Sassam. It's simply reminding ourselves of the fact that I'm not just a broken, I'm not an orphan in this deen. I'm not a spiritual orphan. I belong to someone. That I am an ummati and the Prophet Sassam is my Nabi. He is my Nabi and I am his ummati. That is really what Durood is. That is really the feeling of saying and reciting Durood. That I am an Ummati, I'm not an orphan. And he is my Nabi. And we recite this with feeling. What is the feeling? As if you're presenting a hadiyah or a gift to the Prophet. It comes in a hadith that whenever the believers they send Durood and Salawat on the Prophet, if they send Durood and Salawat in Masjid al Nabi before the Mawajah Sharif, then the Prophet listens to our Durood directly listens to our salam directly and also responds. On the other hand, if a person is further away and if they recite the Rood and Salawat from their own, in their own homes, from their own cities, then the angels, they carry our Durood and they present that Durood to the Prophet So the Prophet is presented with our Durood and Salawat. And we should imagine as if we are presenting this gift to the Prophet every day. So we should have a habit of reciting the Rood 100 times at least every day so that we are presenting this gift to the Prophet Sallallahu And just like when you keep sending gifts, then you establish a taluk. You create a relationship. Then the other person is actually looking. They're, they're expecting. They have this expectation in their heart that when will that gift come? And this is how we should also think. That my Prophet Sallallahu would be expecting a gift from me. That my fala fala ummati, he hasn't presented his gift yet. I'm waiting. So we should not make the Prophet system wait. We should think that I want to do this as soon as possible. As soon as as soon as we get some free time during the day, we should recite some durood and salawat and present that as a gift to the Prophet system. And in a hadith, it's mentioned that tahadu tahabu, that whoever exchanges these gifts. Because of these hadiyah giving gifts to each other, Allah will increase us in mutual muhabbat, mutual love. So if we present these gifts to the Prophet ﷺ, then Allah subhanahu wa will increase the muhabbat of the Prophet system in our heart. It's a beautiful strategy, simple strategy. Just by increasing our durood and salawat, Allah will allow us to increase in our muhabbat for the, for the Prophet ﷺ. So we should, number one, try to increase in our durood and salawat in this month. And we should also make an intention, a niyat, to increase in our ittibai sunnat. Whatever level of sunnat we have, we should try to take it one step further. So this could mean the zahiri sunnah. Maybe we learned about this sunnat of using a miswak, where we never had the tawfiq to use a miswak in our life. This is an opportunity that this is the month of the Prophet Sallallahu so I'm going to respond by increasing my ittabai sunnah by including one sunnah in my life, one sunnah in my schedule. Adding one element of the sunnah, ittabai sunnah, in my life 
that is going to be my response now that i know that this is the month of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam i'm going to respond to it i'm going to feel it i'm going to make some changes so miswaq could be a start for some of us or maybe some of us can work on our akhlaq our character and try to make it according to the sunnah akhlaq try to control our anger try to be more generous with other people or be more forgiving or overlook the faults of others to have more forbearance and hell so whether it's the zahiri sunnah or the batni sunnah or any other sunnah one should try to increase in the ittiba sunnah in this month of in this month of shaban in this month of shaban so that we can also reciprocate and respond to this hadith mubarakah that this rajab is the month of allah shaban is my month and ramadan is the month of my ummah then we can also try to increase in our knowledge about the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we can try to read more about the seera increasing our knowledge about the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so again we develop a munasabat the duas that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to make we can learn some masnoon duas in this month and again this would be our preparation for ramadan if you can learn masnoon duas for example the duas for making wudu or the duas for making ghusl the duas for changing our clothes the duas for waking or or sleeping if you can learn these masnoon duas in this month then inshallah we can practice them and also then use them in the month of ramadan ramadan can seal them can seal this amal for us our mashayikh have mentioned that if a person can add one act one good deed to their schedule in a ramadan and then they can carry it through for the for the 30 days in a ramadan and without any hiccups without missing them they are able to have consistency in this month then because of this one month allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enable will grant tawfeeq that they can carry that ibadah throughout their year throughout the remaining 11 months of the year so we can start right now because ramadan may not be a time to learn these duas or maybe we can we can start this before this process of learning this duas masnoon duas masnoon amal make a list these are things which i don't know and i'm going to learn them one by one one dua one dua a day and then inshallah when the month of ramadan comes we can start we can be really focused on ensuring that we practice them have istiqamah consistency we do it for every day of this month of ramadan and inshallah allah taala will give tawfeeq the doors will open for us we have experienced this ourselves that this is such a beautiful opportunity that any ibadah or any sunnah that you have been struggling with that you weren't able to do if you can begin in this month of shaban make intention pledge that you want to make this you want to attain istiqamah on this and then do it consistently throughout the month of ramadan allah will give you tawfeeq this is the power of this month that allah will give you tawfeeq this is the mercy this is the barakat the anwarat of this month allah will make it happen for you but for that we have to start on this right now one other additional benefit of fasting in this month of shaban is that we can begin to control our nafs and this is the whole philosophy of keeping these extra fasts that fasting it subdues our desire so the other thing we should be focusing on this month practically is to leave sin but for leaving sin we need some strength we need some power we need to curb we need to subdue our passions unlawful passions and fasting is a very beautiful remedy it breaks a person's 
unlawful desires. It helps, it's another technique, another strategy by which we can do isla of our nafs. Because, you know, this nafs has been rebelling against the command of Allah. The entire year it was rebelling. We knew that things are wrong, what we are doing is wrong, what we are feeling is wrong. Sometimes we some, we know this, that the desires that we are having is wrong. But still we are not able to control and we end up committing those acts. We end up giving in to the desires of our nafs. The nafs becomes overpowering upon us. Inna nafs la ammara tum bisu. This nafs becomes nafs ammara. It then commands us to, to do sin and we end up committing sins. So then the question comes here that how can we do isla of this nafs? How can we discipline this nafs? And the answer in our deen is fasting. One beautiful, this is a very effective way, fasting. There is a hikayat which is very famous among the ulama that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he created the nafs, Allah ta'ala asked nafs that man ana wa man anta that who are you and who am I? And the nafs replied that ana ana wa anta anta that I am I and you are you. Yani I have my own shan and you are you. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this nafs inside the fire for 1000 years. This was an azab. Allah Ta'ala punished this nafs by placing it inside the fire of Jahannam for a thousand years. And then after a thousand years, again Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala asked this nafs the same question. That man ana wa man anta, that who am I and who are you? And again the nafs, it gave the same reply. It said ana ana wa anta anta, that I am I and you are you, that yani I have my own shan and you are also, you are you. After this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed his nafs under the layers of snow for a thousand years. There was a particular valley of snow. Allah ta'ala placed it underneath that valley for a thousand years. This was the way Allah punished the nafs for, for a thousand years. And then after a thousand years, again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the same question. That man ana wa man anta. That who am I and who are you? And again the nafs replied that anta anta wa ana ana. That you are you and I am I. And I still have my own shan. I'm still, you know, I am I. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this nafs suffer this punishment of being hungry. Fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this azab that Allah stopped the food for this nafs. Stopped the food and drink for this nafs. Made this nafs feel the pangs of hunger. And after this, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the same question to the nafs, that man ana wa man anta, that who am I and who are you? Now this time the nafs replied and said, that anta rabbi ar-rahim wa ana abduk al-ajiz. That Allah, you are my rab, you are my lord and you are merciful. Wa ana abduk and I am your servant al-ajiz and I am just a lowly humble servant of yours. And this mujahid of fasting, this breaks the passions of a person, the unlawful desires of a person. And many of us, we have been struggling. Many people, many students on Zikr, many Salikin, they also write and complain about this, that we are not able to get rid of these khayalat, these thoughts, these wasabis, these shahavat that we have. We don't have control over our eyes. We don't have control over our thoughts. We are not able to control the feelings in our heart. So if a person is struggling on this, we should try to increase our fasting. We should do ihtimam of fasting because this fasting will act like a cure. In a hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Ya ma'ashar al-shabab, that O young men, man istata'a minkum al-ba'ata falyatazawwaj, that whoever has the istata, the ability to get married, to do nikah, they should get married. Because nikah is a way through which you can control your gaze and you can control your chastity. But right? whoever doesn't have the resources and the provision to do nikah at this point, then then they should fast. Because this fasting is a way which can break a person's shahwat. It can break a person's unlawful desire. It can break a person's nafs. It can do islah of our nafs. So, 
we should try to capitalize on this opportunity and we should try to fast as much as possible in this month of Shaban. In any case, uh, if you look at the Sunnah, the Sunnah is that we should be fasting two days every week. Two days, Monday and Thursday. This was the Mustaqil Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. says, that the Prophet ﷺ would fast on the Monday and Thursday of every month. This was done with a lot of ihtimam. And again, I mentioned to you one of the reasons why these two days are special is because a person's amal, a person's actions are presented to Allah Ta'ala. And the Prophet ﷺ said that I love the fact that my actions are presented to Allah in such a state while I'm fasting. If you look at this from a modern scientific perspective, one of the latest scientific research actually tells us the benefit of fasting two days a week. They have this theory which is called 2 plus 5. And 2 plus 5 theory means any Allah subhanahu has made our program in such a way that if a person can fast two days and then they don't fast the other five days and if they eat normally the way they do, then this is physically very healthy, physically very beneficial for a person. A person's weight doesn't increase. Person, the, the mind doesn't send that signal to increase the weight. On the other hand, that person who eats for the entire consecutive seven days, sukun se, itmanan se, Then the signal goes and a person, the weight increases and also other things happen physically which are not so beneficial or healthy. So this theory which is uh, the researchers have come up with, they've called it 2 plus 5. 2 plus 5. And a lot of work has been done on this and the scientists actually in their own experience now they say, that those who are worried about their weight or those who are worried about health problem, problems or health issues, they should try that if they can fast two days out of these seven and the remaining five they eat normally, then they will be able to control their health issues. They're, they're, they won't have weight issues. So this two plus five for us is Monday, Thursday. Men also have this problem, they're obese. Women also sometimes have this problem. They want to appear thin. And we do different uh, you know, diet regimens and different strategies to control our weight. This is a beautiful way that the Deen of Islam is teaching us, which is going to be beneficial for our Akhirah as well as for our health in this dunya. That we have this 2 plus 5 routine. So, in summary then, you know, we have been living very busy lives throughout the year. We have been distracted from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need something to snap us back into this reality that the month of Ramadan is indeed coming very, very soon. And I think for that reason alone, if nothing else, we should try to now increase in this, the fasting in this month of Shaban and also increase in our ibadat in this month. Spending the day, spending our nights now thinking more and more about Ramadan. Ramadan is not a distant future event. It's coming right within less than 30 days. So it's very critical and crucial for us that we should start thinking about Ramadan and start planning for Ramadan and becoming more and more aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these days that we have of Shaban and more aware of the fact that the month of Ramadan is coming because this was the real sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu that's why the Prophet Sussum used to make dua for this month. That Allahumma barik lana fi rajaba. Now rajab is finished. But Shaban is here. So Allahumma barik lana fi shabana wa balighna ramadan. That Allah grant us baraka in this month of Shaban. Enable us to reach safely the month of Ramadan. One of the things that our Mashaik have explained is uh, Imam Rabbani Hadrat Mujaddid Al-Fistani Sheikh Ahmed Sirindi Rahmatullah 
It is Maktubat Sharif. He explains this using the example of Fajr and sunrise. He says that when the when it's time for a Fajr, then if you haven't, sometimes it happens that it's still time for a Fajr, but you can begin to see the sunlight outside. And if the sun hasn't risen, the sun hasn't come out, but the sunlight is still available. The sunlight is visible. The sunlight begins to increase. And it must have happened with some of you that if you wake up in the last moment, in the last minute, on the last moments, and you don't know when exactly what time is sunrise and you look outside, you might think that it's so illuminated that maybe the sun is already out, even though the sun hasn't come out and still there's time left for praying Fajr. So in the same way, Imam Rabbani Sheikh Ahmed Sirindir Ahmedullah, he says that the month of Ramadan, the Anwarat of the month of Ramadan, that will truly happen when you have the first of Ramadan. And the first of Ramadan is when the this 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 sun will come out, the sun of Ramadan will come out. But before that, the barakat of this month of Ramadan, they already begin to fill the horizon. That starts happening in this month of Shaba. Yes, the actual Ramadan will start on the first of Ramadan, but the Anvarat of Allah, the barakat of Ramadan, the Anvarat of Ramadan, the fuyuzat of Ramadan, the blessings, the graces of Ramadan, all the, the, the special things about the Ramadan, that extreme mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of those features they begin they begin even before Ramadan that light starts spreading throughout the horizon even before so this month of Shaban is going to be very important for us it's very crucial very critical that we try to spend this month in a very heightened state of awareness awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and awareness of trying to prepare ourselves for Ramadan by increasing our ibadah increasing our dua increasing our fasting we have not even now one month. It's like a 30-day program, right? The barakat and fiyuzat, they're already flooding the sky. They're already there. They're already flooding the sky. So if you weren't able to take benefit of the two-month package, which was the, sul- the full sunnah package, right? Rajab and Shaban, that was a two-month full sunnah package. That's how preparation of Ramadan should have been done. But what we still have is an abbreviated sunnah package, which is just one month of preparation, just Shaban. Like people have these various Hajj packages, right? 40 days Hajj, 45 days, 10 days express, 15 days. We have this abbreviated sunnah package, a 30-day package for preparing for Ramadan, one month of Shaban. So we should be fasting in the day and we should spend as many as, as many of the nights we can in ibadah. And as many days we can in fasting. And we have to start planning in advance. Start schedule. Another thing, another practical thing is that we need to start scheduling. So that whatever things we can delay, we can do it post Ramadan. And we have to clear out all things in Shaban. Free yourself up for Ramadan. Ideally, we must have finished everything by Rajab. So that we could have had the whole Shaban free as well. But now what you can do is you can just place, sort out your task into two categories. Those that need immediate attention, take care of them right now, get them finished so that you're not, you're not stuck doing them in a Ramadan. And those tasks that can be delayed, delay them till after Ramadan to Shawwal. So put things in these two baskets, either Shaban or Shawwal. And don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. Even if you have a, going to have a very busy Shawwal, that's a good thing. Because if you have a very, very busy Shawwal, then you have a greater chance of retaining your Ramadan. But if you give yourself two weeks off after Ramadan and then relax, then you will lose Ramadan very quickly. So we want to, you want to be able to make Ramadan as free as possible. And we should try to sort out our activities, clear out our things. And by clearing things, I also mean emotionally. If people have emotional issues, relationships with parents, friends, sort them out right now. Have those conversations now so that your spirituality is not impacted by anything in a Ramadan 
you don't have any stress or tension or sadness you're completely focused ramadan is in front of you and you're completely focused and ready for ramadan take care of your hukukul ibadah right now so that ramadan is free for hukukullah you can dive deep in this month so this is very important right that we have to start preparing and one last thing which is for students of zikr for students of zikr we should try to increase in our zikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show a surge in our zikr in this month of shaban show a surge in our mujahida show a surge in our remembrance of allah in our muraqaba and if we can make that mujahida in this month if we can increase our zikr and muraqaba in this month then inshallah ramadan can be a month of mushahida so we have to take that first step if we do mujahida right now if we do muraqaba and zikr in this month then in ramadan allah can send his fazl upon us so we would want to start our mujahida earlier so that we can get that fazl of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala earlier don't wait for the month of ramadan to start and then i'm going to start my zikr then i'm going to restart my muraqaba then i'm going to start my maamulat now we should start early begin our zikr muraqaba mujahida right now don't wait for ramadan to change we have to make this shaban think about it like this that this shaban has to be better than my previous ramadan this shaban has to be better than my previous ramadan now obviously there are going to be some differences right because you won't be fasting the entire month actually that's makruh we're not supposed to fast the entire month of shaban uh preferably fast the first as much as possible in the first 15 days then you can slowly you know reduce as you enter in the last 15 days and then 3 or 4 days before one should not fast because they want to you want to retain some energy to be able to be fast in the month of ramadan and be fully fresh in the month of ramadan but the first 15 days of shaban one can go all the way right we can start preparing tarawi won't be there uh, but we can still right engage in other acts of ibadah zikr tilawat durood dua any the time table ideally the time table of ibadah that you want in ramadan we should start making that our time table in shaban gradually increase it to your ideal level give yourself a target and then try to work towards that target so that you already have that schedule in place before ramadan this time you can take an early start in ramadan right so these barakat now are increasing the closer and closer we are getting to ramadan the more and more we'll begin to feel an increase in these barakat of shaban and uh, when we hit 15th of shaban there will be the barakat will be almost all way all on the horizon the fuzat are already they're going to be there we just have to maximize on this so lastly i just want to mention one hadith about remembering allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we realize the importance of the zikrullah you may have heard many talks on this before as well we have mentioned many ayat like ya ayyuhal ladina amanu uzkurullaha dhikran kaseera to remember allah taala abundantly now i want to mention one or two ahadees that you know try to be zakir in shaban so that you can be mazkur in ramadan right fazkuruni azkurkum if you do fazkuruni today then allah subhanahu wa taala will do azkurkum in ramadan Uh, even if last ramadan you were lucky to touch the zikr e kaseer think that this time i don't want a minimum level of zikr e kaseer i want days months year a whole life of zikr e kaseer not just moments so do zikr in shaban so that you can become mazkur of allah in ramadan and one way to get zikr e kaseer is to sit in gatherings of zikr is to sit in gatherings of zikr in hadith 
the profit system explain this as follows that no group of people they sit in a remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that they are encompassed by angels and they're enshrouded by the rahmat, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sakina, tranquility descends upon their heart and they keep remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers them in the who yani Allah remembers them near himself so this can be another tafsir of fazkuruni azkurukum that if we sit with the people of zikr then we can also get that azkurukum some people say that no zikr here means salah but it can't be salah here in this hadith because it says that they sit and do zikr in salah that's the least important posture it can be represented by kayam, ruku, sajda but sitting is not identified with salah so sitting here in this hadith means sitting and doing zikr of Allah so we need to find such people and attach ourselves to them who sit and do zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and another hadith which is mentioned in Sahih Muslim the Prophet said that those who are mufradun those who have adopted the zikr of Allah and they remember Allah Ta'ala in solitude they have surpassed everyone so Sahaba Ikram they asked that who are these mufradun and the Prophet replied that they are az-zakirin Allah kaseeran wa zakirat that those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those male believers and female believers who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abundantly so this second hadith is mentioning the fazila of this individual solitary zikr of Allah so ideally we would want to have both we want we would want to sit in solitary zikr and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in seclusion and silence and we would also want to sit in gatherings of zikr and if you can do this in shaban and ramadan then inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us the zikr for the rest of the months as well. So we make dua to Allah ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the best of Shaban. May Allah ta'ala guide us to the best of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in this month of Shaban for all of us and enable all of us to reach this month of Ramadan and benefit from this month of Ramadan. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Before we make dua, we'll make a short silent zikr of the heart for a few moments. Close your eyes and bow your head. Disconnect yourself from everything else in this world. And make niyat that, Ya Allah, you have said in the Quran, Fazkuruni azkurukum, that if you remember me, I will remember you. So, Ya Allah, we are remembering you deep inside of our heart. And we ask you that you remember us by shavering your rahmah, your mercy upon our hearts by cleaning our hearts of its filth, of its sins, by inclining our hearts towards your remembrance. And Ya Allah, my heart in gratitude and shukr is calling upon your ism azam ism jalala Allah, as if my heart is secretly, silently saying, Allah, Allah, Allah.
ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah Make dua Subhana Rabbi Al Wahab Allah Masalli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad Wa barik wa sallam Rabbana zalamna anfusana Wa illam taqfir lana Wa tarhamna lanakunanna minal khasirin Ya Allah Ya Rabbi Kareem Zalamna anfusana Allah we have wrong and zulm on ourselves Ya Rabbi Kareem we come to you tonight in Tawbah Ya Allah, we ask you to accept our Tawbah tonight. Ya Rabbi Karim, forgive us for all the sins that we remember. Ya Rabbi Karim, forgive us for all the sins that we have forgotten. Ya Rabbi Karim, Ya Allah, we ask you that you grant us the tawfiq to prepare for this month of Shaban, to prepare for this month of Ramadan. Ya Rabbi Karim, Allahumma barik lana fi Shaban, wa balighana Ramadan. Allahumma barik lana fi Shaban, wa balighana Ramadan. Ya Rabbi Karim, increase us to increase our Allow us to increase our fasting in this month of Shaban. Ya Rabbi Kareem, allow us to increase in our ibadah in this month of Shaban. Allah allow us to increase in our zikr in this month of Shaban. Allah allow us to increase in our durood and salawat on the Prophet Sussman in this month of Shaban. Ya Rabbi Kareem, allow us to increase in our tawbah in this month of Shaban. Allah allow us to increase in our dua in this month of Shaban. Ya Rabbi Kareem, allow us to increase in all of our good deeds in this month of Shaban. Ya Rabbi Kareem, enable us that we can use this month of Shaban to prepare for the month of Ramadan. Allah enable us that we can seek benefit from, from the barakat of this month of Shaban, from the barakat of this month of Ramadan. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, we ask you that you grant us the himmat and the willpower, the strength to be able to, be able to overcome all the obstacles, Ya Allah, to be able to overcome the obstacle of our nafs, to be able to overcome the obstacle of shaitan, to be able to overcome the obstacles that come in the form of people around us, to be able to overcome the obstacles of the dunya and the attraction, the glitter, the glamour of the dunya. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, we ask you that you ignite the flame of your muhabba in our hearts. Allah, ignite the flame of your muhabba in our hearts. Ya Rabbi Kareem, ignite the flame of your muhabba in our hearts. Ya Rabbi Kareem, remove all the muhabbat of Ghayrullah from our hearts. Empty, of our, empty our hearts of Ghayrullah. Ya Rabbi Kareem, fill our hearts with the muhabbat, with your muhabbat, Ya Allah. Increase us in our muhabbat of you. Increase us in our love for you. Allah, increase us in our desire for you. Increase us in our yearning for you. Allah, increase us in our longing for you. Allah, increase us, Ya Allah, in our knowledge of you. Ya Rabbi Kareem, accept us, Ya Allah. Allah, include our names amongst your Ashikheen. Allah, include our names amongst your Muhibbeen. Allah, include our names amongst the Mah. Bin. Allah include our names amongst the Mukarrabeen. Allah include our names also amongst the Mohsineen. Ya Rabbi Kareem, include our names amongst the Muttaqeen. Allah, all the Sifat and Mu'minana that you have mentioned in the Quran. Allah, we ask you that you include our names, Ya Allah. Allah, endure us with all those Sifat that are pleasing to you. Allah, from the tips of our head to the soles of our feet, Allah, we present ourselves before you. Allah, we ask you that you change us in such a way that we become pleasing to you. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, grant us Haya in our eyes. Allah, grant us Haya in our thoughts. Allah grant us Haya in our desires. Allah grant us Haya in our heart. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah enable us to control our gaze. Allah enable us to control our tongue. Allah enable us to control our emotions. Allah enable us to control and purify our thoughts. Ya Rabbi Kareem, enable us to control our limbs. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah. We ask you that you stop us from committing sins. Allah, whatever sins that we're engaged in, Ya Rabbi Kareem, we want to leave them. Allah, we ask you that you grant us that strength and that himmat to leave our sins. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, we ask you that you grant us the himmat to leave our sins. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, we ask you that you increase us in our muhabbat for you. And out of that muhabbat, Ya Allah, Allah grant us a desire, a deep desire to increase in our ibadat, to focus on our ibadat. Allah grant us khushu and khuzu in our ibadat, the ability to perform our ibadat in a way that is pleasing to you. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah. Allah, we ask you that you accept our good deeds. Allah, we ask you that in this month of Shaban, Allah, this month in which the amal of believers are presented to you. Our amals are presented before you. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, we ask you that you accept our amal. Allah, we know that our amal are deficient. They're weak. They're incomplete. We have many shortcomings and imperfections. But Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, out of your rahmah, Allah, accept our amal. All the good deeds that we have done, 
all the good deeds that we wanted to do, all the good deeds, Ya Allah, that we have plan of doing. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask you that you accept our amal, that you accept our niyat, that you accept our irada. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, overlook our shortcomings. Allah, overlook our faults. Allah, overlook our mistakes. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, shower your hilm upon us. Allah, shower your maghfira upon us. Allah, shower your qubuliya upon us in this month. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, Allah, we ask you that you accept these amal. Allah, we ask you that you allow us the tawfiq to fast in this month for your sake and to be able to present our amal to you in such a way that we become pleasing to you. Ya Rabbi Kareem, make us pleasing to you. Allah, make us in such a way that we become pleasing to you. Ya Rabbi Kareem, grant us rada in this month of Shaban. Allah, grant us your rada in this month of Shaban. Allah, make us pleasing to you in this month of Shaban. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, we ask you to grant us tawfiq to increase in our zikr in this month of Shaban. Allah, make us embodiments of this ayat, those who remember you when they're sitting, lying on their sides or standing. Allah, for those who are doing ard kuruni in this month, Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, we want that we should be, we wish that to be able to remember you every single moment of our life, every single moment of our day, every single moment of our night. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, grant us tawfiq to be able to have steadfastness on the zikr. Tawfiq to remember you in such a way that is pleasing that we become pleasing to you. Ya Rabbi Kareem, include our names also among the Zakirin Allah, Kasira wa Zakirat. Allah, include our names, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us to seek to sit in silent to sit and remember you silently in the core of our hearts. Allah grant us tawfiq to be able to sit in gatherings of zikr in remembering you and remember you in our hearts. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah grant us tawfiq to excel in the zikr to begin to have feelings in our zikr, to have istikamat in zikr Allah to be included amongst the zakirin Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah we ask you that you keep us on this path of toba taqwa. Allah you keep us on this path of tahara in zikr. Ya Allah you keep us on this path of zikr and fikr Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah you that you do isla of our nafs in this month, Ya Allah. Allah, we ask you that you are the Muzakki Hakiki. Allah, we know that we sin because of shaitan and nafs. Allah, we ask you for your help against shaitan. And Allah, we ask you for your help against this nafs that we have. Allah, we ask you that you do tazakiyah of this nafs. Allah, we ask you that you do islah of this nafs. Allah, we ask you that, Ya Allah, you guide us towards those amal that can do islah of our nafs that you guide us towards those people who can help us in doing islah of our nafs Allah that you guide us towards those gatherings which can help us do islah of our nafs Ya Rabbi Kareem Ya Allah we make dua to you Allah we ask you that you grant us a nafs mutma'inna Allah we ask you that you grant us a nafs mutma'inna Allah that you allow us to leave this nafs nafs ammara Ya Rabbi Kareem Ya Allah we present ourselves to you Allah whatever pious intentions we have in our hearts Allah we ask you that you grant us better than what we can ask from you Allah we ask that you grant us according to your own shane karimi your own shane rahimi ya rabbi karim ya allah we ask you that you grant us your rada allah accept us for your rada accept us for your liqa accept us for your muhabba accept us for your ma'rifa accept us for your qurb allah accept us for your mahabubiya ya rabbi karim ya allah make us in such a way that we become pleasing to you ya allah whatever duas that we ask allah we ask you that you grant us better than what we can ask and allah whatever duas we should have asked but we weren't able to ask ya rabbi karim we ask you that you grant us those duas as well. Allah enable us to with all of us to prepare for our death, Ya Allah, for thy day that we, that we will be meeting you. Allah enable us that we meet you in such a state that you are pleased with us and we are pleased with you, that you are smiling at us and we are smiling back at you. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Allahumma barik lana fil maut, wa fi ma ba'd al maut, Allahumma barik lana fil maut, wa fi ma ba'd al maut, Allahumma barik lana fil maut. وفيما بعد الموت ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم صلى الله تعالى على حبيبه خير خلقه محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين